Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Tam Pham from BotAcademy.com, and today we have a very special guest. We have Andrew, who is the community leader at Chatfield. Andrew, what's going on? Hello, this is my robot wave, Tam. Uh, that, that, I'm not going to lie, that made me cringe a little bit. Um, it's going great. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm super pleased to have you on. Like You've been so active in our Bot Academy community, and now you're um, running the Chatfield community, which is amazing. And there's been a lot of buzz about your post recently about all the new features that Chatfield has been going on that's really helpful for marketers and entrepreneurs. And I would love for you to take us on a journey of like what you guys have been working on and how this can benefit from uh, maybe speak high level like about what, what you've been working on and then we'll go into the actual demo about how you can actually use this um, information for your business. Yeah, absolutely, Tam. Uh, take my hand. I'm going to be your guide to the internet like that one meme or whatever. Um, I appreciate you playing along. Anyway, so before I get into that too, I would like to say a big thank you to you and Andrew too because the reason, like part of the reason that I even am where I am right now talking to you is because of your group and you know I had a course and I posted it there and I appreciate you guys not taking it down for being like spam and everything. So long story short, like you guys are part of the reason why I'm here right now. So big shout out to you guys for that. Um, and then yeah, so as far as what we've been up to, uh, the post that you mentioned, basically uh, as of yesterday, uh, I was super excited because I could finally spill the beans. I've been like holding back like you know the super secret chat fuel stuff for a while. And finally, I could be like, yes, I'm a free bird or whatever. Um, my jokes are like very bad. <laughs> Just go with it. Uh, Commit. More to the point. So, so yeah, we yesterday released uh, sequences in chat field, which are essentially, uh, they're not a replacement to broadcasts. Uh, the broadcast tab in chat field is kind of like a complement to that. Uh, it gives you more functionality. It just makes it easier uh, to organize different funnels and sequences of messages that you're sending out in a visual way. Um, and I know like some of the bots that I've built before, they have they send out tons of broadcasts. Um, and previously in the broadcast tab, that could get very tedious and hectic. Uh, there wasn't easy ways to organize or name broadcasts or group them together. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, you know, it would be this long laundry list of stuff that you'd have to sort through and it was a big headache. Uh, so in part, sequences sort of seek to remedy that uh, and just make it much more easier uh, to, you know, organize broadcasts, send them out, figure out the logistics of things without having to worry too much. So mm. to answer your well, question about the high level stuff, that's kind of that. Well, well, question about that. How do you define a sequence? It sounds like it's multiple broadcast messages or how do you define it? Yeah, so it, it can be a little confusing. Uh, basically, uh, so a broadcast and a sequence are very similar. A broadcast is really a way to send mass messages to your audience in the bot. So your bot subscribers say, you know, you and Andrew are doing a webinar, you wanna just send out a mass broadcast. Um, you still can use some different user filters in that broadcast, but at the end of the day, broadcasts are really intended for sending out, you know, mass messages to a lot of people. Uh, whereas sequences are, are a way of segmenting uh, more specific segments, for lack of a better word, of your audience. So say that um, you know, you're doing a webinar, but you're doing a webinar specifically about you know, writing copy for bots, and mm -hmm. say that earlier in the bot you've you know, segmented people who are interested in copywriting specifically in bots. Uh, so you could then use a sequence to put them through you know, a series of broadcasts or just one broadcast, where you send out that message more specifically just to that uh, sort of niche or segment of your bot. So that's kind of the, the main differences and then we'll get in in the demo as well. Uh, sort of the more functional differences, for sure. example, broadcast you can send, um, you're limited in the plugins that you can send. So sequences mm -hmm. give you more functionality uh, in terms of that as well. Mm. I know in other bot softwares, sequences when they drip messages automatically after a certain mm -hmm. period of time. Is that similar to, to chat fields or is it um, like very much like just only segmenting and having more functionality with integrations? Yeah, so it's definitely, that's exactly what, how I would describe it really is, you know, that, that drip sequence or that lead nurturing, uh, mm. you know, customer journey that you're taking people on. Um, so yeah, in, in this new update, it's much easier to drip people through. So uh, basically how you set it up is originally, or initially rather, you subscribe users who take a certain action to that sequence. And then once they're on the sequence, you know, you can set it, you know, immediately after they subscribe, you send them a message, whether it's, you know, a couple seconds after, a day after, a week after, et cetera. You send the, you set up those time parameters and then you can set up follow follow up messages to that 
uh, original broadcast that you send in the sequence based on, you know, different time parameters. So you, yeah. you know, send the initial one, say one day after, then you send another one, you know, two days after that second or that first mm. one, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's exactly how it works and how I would describe it is really as um, a, a drip sequence or lead nurturing. Uh, that's really how I would describe it. Yeah. Awesome. Let's, um, I would love to see this in action and see how <laughs> this actually yeah. works. Let's pull back the curtain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, See if I can figure out how to screen share. Okay, so we're going to do desktop. Uh, let me know when you can see. Just to Got confirm. it. Cool. Uh, and ignore the ridiculous amount of tabs that I have open. That is just my life. <laughs> um, so, okay, cool. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, let's first show you how people can subscribe to a sequence. Again, a series of messages in the bot. So say that um, this is just a generic example that we have right now. If you go to create a default bot, um, but let's pretend that, you know, let's pretend that this is a restaurant. For whatever reason, I always like using restaurant examples in my bots because I, well, I just had lunch in part and I love food. <laughs> so, you know, why not combine both of my passions into one? So All right. this is uh, a restaurant example, right? Let's say that they, I'm not really a big fan of sushi, but let's say they sell sushi because that's the first thing that comes to mind. So, uh, so originally when a user first interacts with the bot, obviously they get to this welcome message. It says, you know, hey, hi, welcome to our sushi restaurant. Um, and then, you know, they go through whatever onboarding you want. And then what you can do is just subscribe them to the sequence. You don't know, you know, in the past you'd have to use user attributes, which still applies to broadcasting, but now you can very easily subscribe somebody to a sequence uh, in Chapfuel. So instead of having to set up different user attributes, you can do it very easily with this plugin, which is called the subscribe to sequence. So I'm going to delete this and show you how that's actually set up. So uh, you, you know, I'll click to add it right here. I'll click uh, to sequence right there, which will then add it uh, mm. in the bot flow. And then I can add certain filters. For example, if I wanted to only subscribe users who are, uh, let's say, female, actually, okay. Maybe it's not working because I don't have any users in here yet. So anyway, <laughs> what I could do well, yeah, I get you. is uh, if, for example, you know, anybody who comes through, I could only subscribe, you know, females or males, for example. Um, that's kind of a bad example, but it's just a, a hypothetical example of what could be done. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to subscribe all users who get through here. I'm not going to do any filtering. Uh, and now anybody who goes through this onboarding and they get past this initial message, it'll subscribe them to this sample sequence. And this sample sequence is right over here uh, in this drop down menu. So now how this looks is after users get subscribed, 20 minutes after they initially subscribe to this sequence, we're going to send them a follow-up message. Uh, so in this case, this is just the default. We have this GIF. Uh, you know, we could replace it with, you know, a dancing sushi costume or something since it's Halloween. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, so the users will get this follow-up message. Uh, and then one day after this uh, follow-up message, so one day and 20 minutes after, uh, they uh, subscribe to the sequence. So think of like all these time parameters on the side is adding after each other. Um, so one day and 20 minutes after they first subscribe, they're going to get this message, which, you know, gives them more information. You could add something like uh, a video plugin if you wanted. So to do that, I could uh, go here and add a, a video that I host on Dropbox, for example, um, to give them more information, give them more context, like, hey, this is how we make our, sh our sushi, things like that. Um, and then they continue through this uh, lead nurturing uh, cycle, if you will, or customer journey. Um, and again, they have, uh, you know, the basic messaging. They also have buttons so they can go to different content blocks, as we call them. So uh, on, you know, day two of this uh, sequence, if users click one of these two buttons, say they click, you know, what's for sale and they go to the product offer, it'll take them here in the content block and it'll show them uh, this content right here. Again, completely unrelated to Sushi because it's just the default. Um, sure, sure. You should be able to get the uh, gist of that. Other cool things uh, is, for example, say that, say that on this uh, broadcast right here, say that instead of uh, showing the video, I wanted to give users the uh, opportunity to unsubscribe from the broadcast or the sequence. Uh, I could uh, uh, change the, the title of that button and say create a new block that's called unsubscribe. And then when users click that, they'll obviously go to the unsubscribe block right here. Mm -hmm. And then just like how it was easy to subscribe somebody using this plugin, the subscribe to sequence, 
I can do the same thing using unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. So, mm -hmm. uh, just click, you know, uh, sample sequence to unsubscribe them from that. And now they're not going to get this uh, message two days later. So it's a very simple way, again, to subscribe and unsubscribe users. Um, and I guess one more thing worth showing you at this point would be uh, previously in the broadcast, how it was very difficult to uh, duplicate content or link to existing content that you had. So, for example, uh, if I wanted to uh, actually, so let's go here and say that I wanted to send, uh, say that I wanted to send this value content block as a broadcast. It was very difficult to do that because I basically have to copy and paste this information into the broadcast tab and do that, you know, one message at a time, which would be very inconvenient. So now what you can do is say that I want to send, send this message as a sequence. I can click here to duplicate it, uh, or I could do it from the original block itself, but I want to duplicate it here. Um, and I'll just call this two. And now what I can do, instead of having to manually copy and paste, I just drag this up here and it'll add that to the sequence. By default, it's turned off because you don't want to be spamming people. You want to make sure that you know what you're sending is polished. Um, but mm -hmm. if I want, <clears throat> excuse me, I can just turn that on and say that I want to send it you know, six hours after this previous message in the sequence. I can do just that. Um, and now this content will be sent super easily. Um, so that's kind of a general overview of what's possible. Um, you can also do uh, split testing uh, using the go to block, which is a big thing. So basically, previously in the broadcast tab, you couldn't use a go to block. And for people who don't know, basically, a go to block is just uh, a plugin that you add in the bot that will redirect somebody to an existing piece of uh, content in a block that you have as opposed to having mm -hmm. them click a button. So, for example, um, let's actually go back into this other block. Um, so for example, instead of, uh, if I wanted to unsubscribe people, instead of uh, you know, having them click on this unsubscribe button, what I could do is add a go to block here and then just uh, take them to the unsubscribe block. So then it would take them to that existing content without me having to uh, you know, add this piece of content right here. So that's a great way to duplicate as well. Um, I know that's probably more in depth than you're looking for at this point, but that's uh, that's really a general overview of the sequences. Again, it's just a much more easy and visual way to organize content, to duplicate content, and uh, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, this is awesome. So far, what I what I hear you saying is you can create now create a sequence where you can engage and drip messages to the to your users. You could um, A B test things. You could duplicate it very easily. You could integrate it with. Uh, I don't think you spoke about the integrations. Um, you mentioned that you can integrate with more um, mm -hmm. softwares than broadcasts. Do you want to? Is there a way you can show that by any chance? Yeah, of? yeah that's a great question. So uh, when I'm talking about integrations, I don't actually mean uh, like think like Zapier integrations or anything like that. Sure. What I'm talking about is just different plugins. Uh, so let me show you an example of that. So say that. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. So say that, uh, let's see if I can do this on the fly. This is kind of a, a weird example, but actually I don't want to create a sequence. I just want to create a new block. Uh, so let's say that, uh, let's do a group and create a new block. Okay. So let's say that uh, every week we are sending out broadcasts uh, from the sushi restaurant. So let's say this is um, uh, subscribe to sequence. Okay. So what we can do here is say uh, uh, you'll get the first message uh, in 12 hours. Then we can subscribe them. Let's make a new sequence actually. So new sequence and we'll call this uh, weekly messages. Mm -hmm. And so now let's subscribe them to the sequence called, oh, my mouse froze for a second. Let's see if it'll unfreeze here. Okay, cool. Uh, so now let's subscribe them to the weekly messages and I'll delete that. Uh, mm -hmm. So now they're going to be subscribed to this weekly messages uh, sequence. And we said 12 hours later. So now let's make this from uh, days to hours. So we'll do 12 hours later. Mm -hmm. And let's say, okay, actually in this first uh, thing, we want to set up a user attribute too, because basically what we want to track is how many broadcasts are being sent. So uh, this probably doesn't make sense just yet, but wait. <laughs> and hope it will. Okay, so, sure. 
say that this is uh, broadcasts sent, mm -hmm. and we'll call for the value. We will say it is at zero right now. So uh, as soon as somebody gets here, the broadcast sent is zero. So uh, that means obviously no broadcasts are sent. Then we're going to subscribe to the sequence. And now what you can do in broadcast, this is the interesting part. Uh, so now what you could do is in this original broadcast, in this first uh, drip message sequence, follow-up message, we can actually add a user attribute. We can call it broadcast sent. Um, and we can do, uh, we can use this original user attribute. So let's actually call it broadcast sent. And then we can add plus one. So now what this is going to do is mm. every time a broadcast is sent, it's going to add mm. one, it's going to add a value of one mm. to that. Uh, mm. So then we can actually duplicate this in, uh, well, let's actually use what I just showed you. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'll do it here. I'm going to delete these other blocks. Uh, let's see. So does this mean that the sequence will trigger only after they get at least one broadcast sent? So, with the, so that's a really good question. So basically, this isn't like anything functional, really. It's just showing a new feature. So uh, for example, like in this previous, so previously when you're sending a broadcast, what you could do is like you couldn't use the... Uh, oh, the, user attribute. Right, you couldn't use the setup user attribute. So for example, uh, if I said you've received uh, broadcast sent, uh, you've received, let's say, you re you've received broadcasts, and this will be the number, so in this case, zero times. So say that you're sending this out on a weekly basis, uh, it would always stay at zero because you don't have any way of adding the user attribute within the broadcast itself. You'd have to make a button that sends somebody to that user attribute and then adds that value. So basically, I know it's a very abstract example, but this is one way to, you know, keep sure. the user attributes uh, consistent without having to have users actually take some sort of action. Another thing that you can do uh, in broadcast right now, you can't use the go to block again, which uh, mm -hmm. links to existing content, um, and it does it automatically without a user having to press a button. So in the sequences, you can do that. So for example, again, as I showed previously, if I wanted to, you know, a user gets here and without having to click a button, they get forwarded to other content without me having to you know, copy it or anything like that. Um, what I could do is actually go to the go to block here and say I want to link to the value content. I go here and just type in value content. Now a user gets this broadcast, they get tagged with this broadcast sent plus one, mm -hmm. and then they go to the value content, uh, and that's how that works. So. Uh, if, if people aren't familiar with chat field, this probably doesn't make too much sense, um, but it's yeah. just an easier way to give to give bot creators more flexibility at the end of the day. Definitely. Uh, I think I'm going to ask a question that someone might be wondering. Um, this is a very abstract concept, like you said. Is there a concept that one of your users have tried, or maybe you have tried, or one of your teammates have tried, that uses this user attribute um, feature in a very like marketing way um, for mm -hmm. their business? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Uh, I guess one example that I would give, uh, it might be a little abstract still, um, but basically right now I'm working on a pregnancy chatbot. So every week it sends users, as uh, it sends users a message. So every it basically asks you know at the beginning how many, uh, you know when's your due date basically, and then every week until that due date it's going to send different broadcast messages. So. Mm -hmm. The easy way, like a good use case of this user attribute plugin with broadcast is that now when sending these, or when sending these sequences rather, we can keep track of how many weeks have elapsed since until that user, or how many weeks are left until that user is going to have their baby basically. So instead of, so say for example that a user gets a broadcast that says, hey, are you ready for this week's tip? Instead of them having to actually press that button and then get that message for the user attribute to trigger, now we can do it automatically. So again, if the user, for example, doesn't want to look at the tip that week, we can still keep track of the weeks left without them having to actually take action. So um, obviously that's not going to apply to everybody. Um, and the user attributes are kind of a little tricky to wrap your head around at first. Um, but when you get the gist of it, it's a really easy way to automate a lot of things without having to, you know, recreate a separate instance of each like end circumstance that you're dealing with, if that makes any sense. Mm, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it sounds like, for example, if I have a goal of like my marathon is in 30 weeks, mm -hmm. every I can set up a bot to say like, oh, your marathon's in 29 weeks, 28 weeks, 27 weeks, if I wanted to, um, and so on and so on. 
Ex exactly. And again, the, the beauty of it really is that if your users aren't always responding to broadcasts, then now with sequences, you can still, again, keep track of that time period, just as one example, or any other, you know, number or value that you're keeping track of, you can still, you know, rely on the timing of that without having to have users actually interact with the bot to, you know, initiate that. Yeah, I'm trying to relate this back to, to the actual marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe one use case I have, I haven't not tried this out yet, to be totally honest, um, which, which is why I might have a genuine reaction and genuine curiosity about this. Um, maybe one thing is like if you have a business where you have like a deadline funnel or like a launch where it's going to end soon, you can use it to your advantage so that if your launch ends on December 1st, um, the chatbot will automatically know that that's the due date. And when you send messages, you can say, oh, um, it's going to end uh, in, you know, uh, the bracket, bracket, like this many days, bracket, bracket. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure to, to to buy your product now or something. And it'll yeah, keep going yeah. on for the rest of the day without having mm -hmm. to manually put in nine days left, uh, yeah, 11 no, days that, left. That, that's a really good example, actually. Um, and yeah, so that would be an example of where you could just set one user attribute. It wouldn't even have to be user specific. It would be the same for every user. Um, so in other words, you could set it manually. So what that would look like is say that uh, right here, I'd have a user attribute. And for broadcast sent, instead of uh, you know, requiring a user to input a value, uh, we could set it at say you know, 20 days, for example. And then yeah, every day you send out a broadcast and say, hey, you know, you could, then you could do um, math in the broadcast. So then you could do uh, days left, for example and you could do uh, broadcast sent and then minus um, and then minus one. So then yeah, every, if you're sending out daily broadcasts, then every day, yeah, it counts down and you don't have to, again, input, you know, 20, 19, 18, 17, all the way through. Cause that's <laughs> obvious, so this would be a much simpler way to do that. Very nice, awesome. Well, this is, this is freaking great. The sequences work now. You can A-B test. You can have user attributes and go-to blocks. Um, is there anything else that we did not cover that you, that you think that we should definitely go over? Or I think we get a whole gist of it already. Uh, I think we went over pretty much everything. Uh, I guess the only other things to mention, again, I showed the copying of existing content. You can you know, make a, a block that you already have, a sequence, very easily. I guess the... Um, Oh, I guess the other really cool things to mention would be, um, I was going to say one thing, but it completely left my mind. But the other thing that I didn't mention yet was uh, the click-through rates and open rates and all the data that you can get right here. So I can enlarge it a little bit. So, excuse me, basically, uh, you see these icons right here. You have the number of subscribers that you reached for, uh, so this is the total for the sequence, the number of mm -hmm. subscribers that you reached uh, in the total of all these messages that you sent out, mm -hmm. the average open rate for the sequence, uh, the average click-through rate as well, mm -hmm. which is really helpful. So you see that as sort of uh, an aggregate of all the data in your specific sequence. And then if you see if I hover over each individual one of these messages, I also mm -hmm. get the same data. Um, so I get the amount of people that receive the broadcast or receive the sequence, um, the open rate and click-through rate again. Um, so that's another sort of way to visualize your data that's, that's obviously very helpful. Um, mm. to see, you know, which sequence is doing best, which message can I improve on, things like that. Um, so that's that. And then the other thing that I was going to mention is just that uh, there's no limitations on the number of sequences that you can send. So if you want to send, you know, a thousand sequences you can do that I don't know why you would um, but if you're a crazy person and want to do that you can totally do that um, and then of course uh, all got, like a thousand messages in the sequence chat you'll have its pro plan but this is not you know restricted to that in any way it's available to all users now um, and you know it's a really great and exciting new way to uh, obviously engage with your users and from a back-end standpoint of being a bot creator obviously it's much simpler uh, to deal with this, at least for me in a visual way and, you know, to see all your st statistics as opposed to uh, sort of doing it the, the old fashioned way. Mm, awesome. I know we have one more special offer and you can go ahead and stop sharing your screen now okay. um, that you have. And uh, you told me that this month of November 2017, that Chatfield is running a contest where you give out a prize for something. Can you tell us more about what this contest is and how our members can potentially join? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, this was something we talked about earlier. Uh, thanks for bringing it up. So that magic.
Apple something that you mentioned uh, is an iPhone, 256 gigabytes iPhone X. Um, it's not directly related to chat field, but it's an, it's an incentive nonetheless. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is a, is a chat bot competition that we're hosting uh, in the chat field group. Uh, I sent Tam a link to a landing page that has all the specific uh, guidelines and everything for this. Um, but yeah, basically to enter, you have to build some sort of bot that achieves a meaningful and measurable business goal. Uh, so we want to th see things like, you know, ROI, uh, not necessarily open and click through rates because everybody kind of knows what those are. But basically, how did a bot help your business achieve a specific goal? How does it compare to email things like that? Basically, we want to see hard statistics hard data We don't just want to see you know, hey, I made a bot that tells you random jokes like that's cool Obviously, but we want to see the data see the results because um, mm. at the end of the day That's really what matters. So yeah, the the contest starts today on November 1st and it's running until December 1st I believe <laughs> Excuse me. I believe we're picking the winners uh, or the finalists, there's going to be 10 finalists and then one grand prize winner. So mm -hmm. we're picking the 10 finalists, I believe, on December 7th and on, then on the 14th. Um, though, or we're picking the, the 10 finalists on December 7th. Those then go up for a community vote in the Chatfield group. Um, mm -hmm. And then the grand prize winner will be announced on December 14th, I believe. Uh, so basically, there's a one-month window. Um, but we think, uh, we think people can do it. And uh, we're really excited to see what, uh, what everybody brings to the table. Awesome. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for offering our members the opportunity to join the contest and for sharing what's new in Chatfield. Like, it's really awesome to see you guys continue to improve the platform. And I'm hopefully that many, many people watching this will be able to jump on this and experiment for themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I would recommend at the end of the day. Just uh, that's how I, not that I'm some expert or anything, but that's how I uh, got started. And that's how I learned best just trial and error, you know, dive in, <laughs> see what works, what doesn't, and just, you know, build a ton of bots. So that's what I would definitely suggest. And yeah, Tam, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for this opportunity uh, to share. And uh, we'll have more to share soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Yes. And the links to chat fuel and the link to the contest will be in the post that we, um, or in whatever the video description here, um, where we put it. And hope you guys had uh, found a lot of value in this. And we'll see you all in the Botacaddy community. Take care.